MyEG Services has inked an agreement with a China-based biopharma company to exclusively distribute its COVID-19 vaccine in Malaysia for three years. MyEG said it entered into an MOU with Anhui Zifei Longcom Biopharmaceutical Co. to conduct phase 3 clinical trials of Zifei's vaccine and obtain halal accreditation from Jakim. The government e-services provider said in a statement that the commencement of the Phase 3 trials will make the Phase vaccine one of the first to undergo the final stage trials in Malaysia under the purview of MOH. Upon successful completion of the said trials, MyEG will be the sole distributor of the vaccine in the country. Zifei is a subsidiary of Chongqing Zifei Biological Products Co., which is listed on the Shenzhen Stock Exchange. It has been engaged in the biological product industry since 2002, mainly the production of vaccines for human use. Shares in MyEG jumped to a multi-year high of 2 ringgit 19 earlier today, before pairing gains to close still 5% higher at 1 ringgit 90 for a market capitalization of 6.6 billion ringgit. Genting Malaysia's resort in the Bahamas will be reopening on Boxing Day this year. On its website, Resorts World Bimini Bahamas said that it had been taking extra precautions for the safety of its guests, noting that limited packages, including two-night packages, are currently available for booking. It added that all visitors to the Bahamas must be cleared of the COVID-19 virus before coming ashore. The resort includes some 305 rooms and a casino. In order to enter the Bahamas, guests have to go through a COVID-19 test five days prior to arrival. In addition, they also have to apply for a health travel visa and opt in for mandatory COVID-19 health insurance. They will also have to complete a mandatory daily online health questionnaire while they are in the country and take a COVID-19 rapid antigen test on the fifth day of their visit. Shares in Genting, Malaysia were up by 0.4% at 2 ringgit 57, valuing the leisure and hospitality group at 14.5 billion ringgit. Dato Sri Tengku Adnan Tengku Manso, better known as Kunan, has been granted a discharge not amounting to acquittal amid the MACC's complaint against one of the witnesses in his second graft trial. Today's decision marks the third high-profile discharge this year after the granting of the court order to Riza Aziz for money laundering involving 1MDB funds in May and the subsequent discharge and acquittal of Tan Sri Musa Aman of all 46 criminal charges in June. KL High Court Judge Muhammad Nazla Muhammad Ghazali granted the discharge after Deputy Public Prosecutor Julia Ibrahim said the prosecution requires some time to investigate the MACC's complaint as it may have implications for the witness in question. Gunan was accused of receiving a 1 million ringgit bribe from property developer Datuk Tan Eng Bun in 2013. The said sum was allegedly an inducement to approve the application of Nucleus Properties, now Paragon City Development, to increase its plot ratio in the development of Lot 228 in Jalan Samara, Kuala Lumpur. Kunan also faces an alternative charge in his capacity as the then Federal Territories Minister with receiving for himself one million ringgit from Tan, knowing that the latter as a director of Nucleus Properties had connection with his official duties. The charge carries jail time of up to two years or a fine or both. Malaysia suffered a year-on-year 78.6% drop in tourist arrivals between January and September this year as travel hit the brakes amid the COVID-19 pandemic. According to Bernama, Tourism Malaysia said today the country only recorded 4.29 million tourist arrivals during the period versus 20.1 million in 2019. It said the lower number of tourist arrivals also saw receipts from tourism drop by 80.9% to 12.6 billion ringgit from 66.1 billion in the same period last year, with the per capita expenditure registering a decline of 10.7% to 2,938 ringgit and 40 cent from 3,289 ringgit and 30 cent last year. 
Malaysia's top 10 tourist-generating markets continued to be Singapore, Indonesia, China, Thailand, India, Brunei Darussalam, South Korea, Japan, Australia and the Philippines. In terms of the number of excursionists or daily visitors, Tourism Malaysia said there were 1.73 million arrivals from January to September, a decrease of 74.9% compared with 6.9 million the previous year. Citing data from the Pacific Asia Travel Association, it added that neighbouring ASEAN countries like Thailand, Singapore, Vietnam and Indonesia recorded a similar decrease of more than 70% in tourist arrivals. The Commercial Settlement Agreement, inked today between Petronas and the Sarawak State Government, offers Sarawak a greater share of revenue from oil and gas found and produced in the state. This is because the deal provides for a consultative framework, whereby both parties will be able to jointly discuss and deliberate on matters of importance to the industry, including those which affect the interests of the state. Petronas President and Group CEO Tengku Muhammad Taufik Tengku Aziz and Sarawak State Secretary Datuk Jaul Samyon said in a joint statement today, the agreement also provides for a more active involvement by Sarawak in the industry through Petroleum Sarawak's management of onshore oil and gas resources and investments in upstream offshore ventures. Tengku Muhammad Taufik and Samyon said the agreement was executed today following the conclusion of negotiations facilitated by the Ministry of Finance. Both parties said they have resolved their differences over the oil and gas industry matters and the imposition of state sales tax on petroleum products.